Welcome to Rose Spirits. My name's Luke Quinn. I got into cars growing up, watching TV shows like Top Gear. Real cars with proper engines and motion behind them. None of this fancy pants clout case and TikTok piles of dung. That's what inspired me to build my own car collection. This is my 1996 JZX100 Cresta with only 50,000 miles on the clock. It currently has a 1JZ GT engine with an R154 gearbox, but it started life off as a 1JZ GE and an auto box, but was swapped over in Japan at around 50,000 kilometers just after its first shunken, which is a Japanese MOT. I've got it sitting on a set of Strom DSO5 wheels, which have wrapped here this book's green, to go with Java green calipers and spindles have done. It's currently running around 330 brake and um, it's got a few remods, we'll get into that once we show the engine bay, but this car is just absolutely beautiful. Most people, whenever you say JCX100, automatically think of Chaser, but there was actually three different versions of the JCX100, with variations, sorry. There was the Cresta, which was the more VIP yoke, there was the Mark II, which was the kind of businessman spec, and then there was the Chaser, which was the sporty one. The Chaser came in no cup holders. This did. So while you're laughing, haha, it's not a chaser, you don't have cup holders, mate. You might be sitting wondering to yourself, why I have a helmet on my car? I do use it as my drift car. I've only recently started drifting, probably within the last year, or whenever I got this car, I'd actually never drifted before in my life. But, so far I'm really enjoying it. I've had a few wee bangs here and there, but overall it's just sitting absolutely beautiful. Being from 1996, this car has some really weird perks and features, and we're also going to be going through what I've done to it and the specs of the build. Starting off with the kit, we've got rear kit, side skirts, and I'll put a wee photo up here of the front lip as well. Nobody actually knows what this kit is. It's a half kit, I know that for sure, because this is the original back bumper, and this car was originally two-tone silver, so white here with silver here it was class i don't know why they painted it all white but they've done it um, and to be honest i love it i do love pearl white it's just an amazing color going on to one of the coolest optional extras in this car it was an optional extra that Toyota only did for a small while and um, to my understanding one of the rarest optional extras in this car if we look at the boot here you're like that's cool badge mate no normal badge mate if you look here that is real 24 car gold plating Madness. Only real VIP cars would have that. They just don't build cars like this anymore. It's nuts. We then move over to the interior. The interior of the JCX100 Crest is exactly what you'd expect for a 1996 luxury sedan. We've got 100% wool seats. We've got extremely thick and luxurious shag pile style carpet. We've got wood all around the uh, radio, which stopped working last week, but it is what it is. Mixed with carbon Kevlar. This is actually from a JZX um, 100 that was manual from factory. As I said, if you look in the dash here, we've got park, reverse, neutral, drive, two and low. Um, that's because, as I said, this car was auto, so it's been changed. The traction control doesn't work. The snow mode does work. But the coolest thing is this. These vents, you're probably like, swing it. Well, this isn't a playground, that. If only you knew. Let's turn this aircon on, mate. That's hit swing. If you look at the vents, the vents are moving by themselves, mate. It oscillates the air in the cabin. It oscillates the air in the cabin, and you're like, but look, what if it's a warm day? Well, what if it's a warm day? Damien, I've got a premium ball cooler right underneath the steering wheel. 
these GAT axes don't mess about. We've got hard race because we're running hard race front upper arms, BCs because I'm on BC DS uh, drift series coilovers, and turbo smart because I've got a turbo smart gauge and a turbo smart boost controller, but the boost controller isn't in. And then low spirits because they're the fucking best. Cop some stickers if you haven't. Not only is the interior of a 1996 JDM car extremely luxurious, but you get some wee mysteries like this Japanese chewing gum. How mad sad. Found that under one of the seats one day when I was cleaning. It's just mental. It also has a nice wee naughty steering wheel. This is something that the previous owner kindly gifted to me. I love it. I think it's cool. I'm definitely going to get it redone as it's seen better days, but um, I'll be sending that off to Royal Steering Wheel soon. What colour do you think I should go for? Stay black or go for white leather? by Clio 197. This car was built in 2007, being one of the only 190 racing blue 197s built within the whole of the UK and currently the only bag 197 in the whole of the UK. It's got some mega fat wheels with some mega sick fitment and this is a car that I've had since I was 18 and I don't think I will ever sell. Let's get into the specs. This car is currently running at the motor style suspension which is fully custom, barred up with some airlift 3P management. We've got dual 444cc compressors and a three gallon seamless tank. This bit build, if you haven't already seen me build it, click here, is one that I actually built myself. I've done all these hard lines myself. I didn't do these ones, but I've done all these hard lines, I've built these bases, and I re-wrapped that base, and I'm in love with this car. This car is sitting currently with negative seven degrees of camber in the rear. A negative three in the front which gives it that ultra wide stance that you are all seeing i recently mounted this job style plate which is something i really think does add to the car and looks fucking insane it just gives it that wee bit more what whenever people see it i remember one time whenever i first just got this car i used to work in weimark and it was parked at the front and there was two wee grannies up the back window like us here and they're pointing and one of them looks at me and goes is that a ball no there's a nice few wee details in this boot build that you may not have noticed, such as genuine RS badges underneath both compressors, because I just think that really fucking made it stand out. And the chrome goes to the chrome wheels, which goes to the chrome sticker, which goes to the chrome handles. This car is just perfection in my eyes. It's a work of art. The interior of the Clio 197 isn't anywhere near as luxury as the Cresta, but it's so cool in its own ways. We've got these bolstered, si bolstered seats from factory, which, yeah, they might be a wee bit worn up because this car has 86,000 miles on it, but we've got some insane bits like this steering wheel, which I sent off the Ed uh, Royal steering wheels to get done. We have Alcantara on the top with leather at the sides, yellow stitching. I painted this wee bit blue, and I've also painted these blues with a custom made Reynolds Sport 197 uh, sticker that I actually designed up myself. We've got an Alcantara boot with Alcantara um, visors and head cloth. No, but it's broke. As you can see, it's not perfect. This car I love. The reason I haven't changed the seats is because these ones hold you in so well from factory. This gearbox is already so short shifting. You can just blast through these gears. And we've got our, air, uh, our airlift management mounted just right up here. This car is so cool in its own ways. It's definitely not the cruiser out of the two, but it does have its own place. This is one of, in my eyes, the best hatchbacks that were ever made. Some say it's like a mini GT3 RS, smoking almost everything it can on the Nürburgring. JZX100 Cresta came with originally a 1JZ GT 
um, which was the non-turbo version of the one JZ, and then just before it's Shunkin, which is the Japanese LT, got swapped over to a one JZ GTA. This car originally came with 280 brake, but it's had some modifications since then to get it up to what it is now, which is roughly 330. So it came with an epoxy hard pipe kit, which I've since polished up these two bits, put some black coppers on. The rest of the hard pipe kit is painted black, epoxy black, to stop it corroding. We've also got an epoxy front mint and here. Um, as well as that, it's, it's basically as soon as I got the car, I was like drifting it, because I do drift this car, and I believe my radiator. So I went for the best of the best, and I got myself a Koyo Rad radiator. This thing's in fucking class. Honestly, like this car has never since I put this radiator in ever even creeped above temperature. It's actually ridiculous. Like going on from there, I put a garage the expansion tank into it. I came with the HKS 1AM green filters in, and they're all right. But this car had no arch liners in it when it came from Japan, so that meant one thing every time we went on the drift day. The it, engine bay was filling with loads of dirt and your air filter was getting wet and those dry filters then degrade fuck that i got myself an epoxy um funnel twin funnel and taper something it's called today we're fitting the epoxy car in case there is a it. Mm -hmm. either way it looks cool that's all that really matters do you know what i mean um, as well as that, I'm currently running an IS300 LSD in the rear. I've got a uh, hard race front, front um, camber dust alarms. I've got BC VF series, which according to BC UK, were actually the first set of BC VF, VF series for JZX100 in the UK. And whenever it came to specking out these BACs, I actually emailed Adam LZ's team, got the specifications for his brown chaser and changed them a wee bit because he's very aggressive with specifications. He was running 24k in the front and 7k in the rear. Mental in the rear. So I went, right, I don't need that much grip in the rear. So I went 12k in the rear, 22k in the front. The car drives perfect. I'm six flicks from stiffest in the rear. Factory settings in the front for the Batman and it's fucking amazing. These cars don't need much and in my eyes, I'm currently running because I've got a decap and exhaust and stuff which came from probably running 0.9 boost instead of 0.7 so it's roughly making about probably 320, 330ish from what I've heard other cars are making and you don't need more than this I go to the track, I can link up all the corners I can have more fun than fucking 500 horsepower cars and I know it's going to be a reliable car because it's a 1JZ GTE God's motor Not only was this 90s classic one of the best driving cars of its time and insanely luxurious inside, but it looks absolutely insane. This exact model came originally from factory in two tones, top white being pearl white, top half being pearl white and bottom half being silver. This then in Japan, before it got sent over, got fully kitted, painted white, and I've recently put these insane strong DS 05s on. I've painted my calipers and spindles and my upper arms drab of green, which I'll put a wee photo of in here. And I've also wrapped two of the spokes, which in my eyes, absolutely insane. Something else that's quite cool that most people don't think realize or maybe know about these cars. So what you're maybe thinking is what are these? These here are actually parking lights. That is kind of a mandarin thing, I believe, in Japan, or just something that they tend to do. But what's cool about these, these are fed by fiber optics, they're not bulbs. They light up green, which goes for all the green accents. That paired with the freshly polished headlight, the crystal clear slide light, and the lovely Low Spirits MFG front banner. Are you trying to tell me this car doesn't look fucking insane? Renault engine, which is the F4R. This F4R from factory creates 197 PS or 194 horsepower, which is weird because it's called 197, so most people think that it's 197 brake, but it's not. It came with, I believe, around 168 meters of torque, but if I'm wrong, I'll correct that here. 
And the minute I've done a few things to increase that, starting off, I went in, and one of the first things I did this car when I got it was put a KTR induction kit on, because this induction kit is absolutely huge, and it makes this car sound nuts. After that, I then went and I got an exhaust. I got a Miltec non-res Catlac. It was good for a while, but it quickly got bored and upgraded that to a Miltec D-Cat and a Miltec, no, a Miltec D-Cat pipe and a 421 manifold. I think it was a Grelly manifold. It then got sent off to Region Denars and Matt, which is now making approximately 208 brake and 190 newton meters of torque, which is quite an improvement from what it was. Um, these cars are known to the Polo Motorsports and especially Reynolds purists as one of the best hatchbacks that were ever made. They're competing with things such as GT3 RSs, GT2 Turbos, making Lambos look stupid on wet track days, and they're just incredible crack for five grand. I got so much hate when I did this to it. I stuck negative seven camber on it and negative three, because not only like the crest this, does this thing form like an absolute weapon, but it looks nuts.